good evening, my heavenly slice of sweet potato pie. How are you tonight? I am doing fantastic. Before I start tonight's video, I want to show you some products that Lole Vefe has to offer. So as a lot of you know, Lole Vefe is the company that provides the large uh, silicone mats. They have medium jumbo and mega and um she also sells some other things and she was kind enough to send me some to play with so i just wanted to show you some of these things they are selling and i have prices for everything so as for the mats really quick i'll go over it again um the medium mat is 18 dollars. it's 40 by 60 centimeters the jumbo mat which i have two of those and they cover a seven foot table, the, the two of them. Um, those are 60 by 80 centimeters and they are $39 a piece. And then the mega mat, which is 100 by 140 centimeters is $69. Now for the jumbo and mega mats, I do have a coupon code below that takes $5 off. Um, but she sells other things. So first I want to show you this cool little torch and the reason why I like this torch is for the following reason first of all it is only $18 <laughs> second of all a lot of my viewers want to try resin or they want to try using a torch for uh, the bubbles in their paintings the air bubbles to torch them and they're afraid of torches. You know, we're used to seeing the big blow torches, the big blue tank ones. And these ones here are really, really small. They're, I would say, close to a grill lighter. I mean, always exercise caution and have a fire extinguisher. No matter when, you know, as long as you're using fire, always have that by always use caution with stuff like that but they are pretty simple this little nozzle here you get one of these little refill tanks now these you can get at home depot they're like five bucks or your gas stations uh smoke shops sell butane that was 5.99 and it's pretty simple to fill. And I'm going to do that for you really quick. Now, the thing is, is you have to make sure the torch that you have, that the nozzle on your tank will fit into this little opening. Now, the one I, this is made specifically for my burn somatic hand torch, which I got from Home Depot also. That one's more... A little more expensive. I think that one was like 30 bucks. That's for this one. Not that you could ever tell what it is right now. It's so disgusting. But this one here, this butane, you see these little uh, circles here? Those are alternate tips. So it's a universal butane. Um canister so it'll fit all those different size handheld torch torches but this one here I'm thinking is just the regular let's see the regular attachment so you hold it upside down you push sorry Slipped right out of my hand there. Until it starts to spit a little bit like that and it's full. You wait about five minutes and then it's good to go. You don't want to spark this up right now because there is butane in the air and it could, you know, cause a big cloud of fire to poof up in front of your face. But we'll let this sit to the side. I'm not going to use it right now anyway in this video, but I just wanted to show you how cute that was. Cute little handheld, okay? So that was the first thing. Um, 
She also is selling silicone molds now, and I will be using these in a future video. These are large crystals, and what you do is you put them on the table just like that and fill them with your resin with your different colors. It's a set of three different shapes, and the price for those is $10 for the... For the uh, three set here. I don't even have you guys on screen. What am I doing tonight? The holidays are close by. So they're just three different crystal shapes. It's going to make one big crystal. Then, so that's $10 for the three of those. Then she also has a silicone funnel for $4. These cute little squeeze bottles to pre-mix your paints in. A buck a piece. And they have the cute little uh, twist lids. All right. So she has those. And then this is the silicone geode um, coaster mold that has five cavities. And they are all different shaped. And that is $14 only. So that's not bad. And then we have apron which I will probably wear one of these days soon for you. And then the last thing I have is a tote bag. And now you may say, what am I going to do with a tote bag? But, you know, if you go somewhere and you want to take some cross-stitch with you or some kind of a supply to do something, your coloring books to relax on the train, that is $12. For the tote bag. And then she has um, the scraper, which I believe I showed you, but I'll show you again. You can use this to clean the mat, or you can use it for abstract art. Um, it's silicone, so it's going to peel right off if you use resin on it, and that's two bucks. And then the last thing I think that I have is the tool caddy, which is this right here and you can rest your hammer in it <laughs> now why do i have a hammer hmm wouldn't you like to know so anyway i just wanted to show you guys that stuff because i'm not sure if everybody knew that she does especially the the geode um coaster mold for 14 bucks, I don't think you could go wrong. I will try it out this week in a video. But anyway, the reason for this video is balloons. I think that a lot of people don't want to try them because they feel that there's a lot of work that has to go into it. Um, I agree with that and I don't agree with that. If you acrylic pour already and you mix your paints with Floetrol and water, that is two ingredients that you're mixing your paint with. This Bloom recipe that I've shown you with two, two different ways is mixed with two different products. So it's the same amount of ingredients, but I think that just because it's something new and it does look complicated and it's hard to try uh, and to achieve, that a lot of people are backing away from it, which, hey, that's perfectly fine. But what I want to try tonight is I want to try and see if I could do this with acrylic paints. With acrylic paint, water, and polycrylic varnish. That's it. Okay. Oh, and the, the flow trawl and white paint to make the cells. Now, there's a channel I want to tell you about. Uh, Jen Neal. She, even before the, the course came out teaching blooms, she was experimenting with acrylic paints and different varnishes and gels, um, gloss gels, and I believe she achieved it. So check her out. It's just another way to do this without having to buy the house paints and all that. I'm going to link her below. She's a sweetheart. But right now, what I'm going to do is set up and try to do this with just paint, water, varnish, and my flow trawl and white paint for the cells. Quickly, somebody asked me the difference. How do you tell 
Oh boy, let me start that over again. Somebody asked me, how do you tell the difference between a good canvas and a not so good canvas? Well, here is my Dollar Tree canvas. Last video, I said I was close to four twigs and a sheet of toilet paper. That's what this is compared to. Um, maybe I'll change that and say four sticks and a sheet of bounty. Because, I mean, it is, I don't know how to show you this, but it is so flimsy in the center. It's really, really cheap. So what they do is they put a little cheap piece of canvas over a frame and then they just staple it down. Okay. Now this here is a level three canvas, which is a gallery wrapped canvas. This is a high quality canvas. Difference this was a buck. This was 12 bucks. Okay. You see the back, it's tucked in nicely. And it's really, really good quality canvas. So that's the difference. But for this technique, I've been practicing on cheap things like these and um, tiles because I don't want to waste a $12 canvas on experimenting okay so i was at uh michael's and art minds sells an outdoor an outdoor true white semi-gloss paint exterior semi-gloss paint when i do um the other recipes for the blooms i am using the walmart paint for the the layer on the bottom and that is a semi-gloss but it's an interior so i'm going to give this a try and the first thing i need to do is look at the consistency of it to see if i even need to water it down which i don't think i'm going to have to but i'm going to pour it in a cup just so I can see what the consistency is on it because I don't want it too thick. So that should be good. It's it's pretty runny. It might be too runny, but we will uh, see what happens. So since I started out with it in the cup, I'll just finish it off, even though I'm going to just turn around and dump it right out now. For my other colors, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a little bit of paint in the cup, thinning it down with some water, and adding some polycrylic to it. So here is some red violet deep, and that is from Utrecht, which I buy at Blick. It's a medium body paint. And what I'm going to do here is take a little bit of the polycrylic first. I have it in a uh, container for easier handling here because it's kind of a pain to keep opening that can. So I have a pipette that is, let's see, three milliliters, and I would say there is a teaspoon worth of paint. So we have a teaspoon of paint and most likely a teaspoon of the polycrylic. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mix that around. And then I'm going to add my water. Now how much water? Let's see how much we actually use here. Um, wish I had a teaspoon. I just put in a tea, uh, approximately a teaspoon of water. Now this is gonna vary. If you use a fluid paint, something like this, you're probably not gonna even need to use water. So it, it all depends on the consistency of the paint that you're using. 
and whether or not you need to add water. You want it to be thick, but you want it to also run off the stick. Now, this is way too thick. It plops. So I just added another teaspoon of water. And that is very close. Now, don't fear, I'm not going to make you watch me wa uh, mix all the colors. So it's really ploppy still. Now let's say that you want to Use different brands of paints that are different fluidities. I suggest that you mix the runniest paint that you have first. So if I had this medium body, this fluid, and then an Arteza, which is kind of in between, I would mix this first and then make these match the consistency of this, just so that the cons consistencies are all the same. So we're gonna check it again. It's getting a little bit better, but I'm gonna slow down with the water now. I put three drops in. See now, that's like almost perfect right there. Now, if I had put another teaspoon in, I would have gone too far. So that's why it's important to add your water slowly. And I think I'm gonna go with two drops. Now again, this may seem like a lot of work to pour paint, but this is what we do with Floetrol and paint, acrylic paint, when we're just doing normal acrylic pours. So it's really not that much work, much more work. It's just that, you know, you have to go out and buy the ingredients. Um, and I think that a lot of people have gotten discouraged because they haven't been able to produce... Um, a bloom yet yeah, that looks anything like the creators and I'll tell you this right now Shelly did not do this overnight it took her years and years to perfect her technique so even I got frustrated and I said you know who are you to think that you can just do this overnight it, it doesn't happen like that takes a long time for anybody to perfect something, no matter what the technique is. You just got to keep practicing and not get discouraged. All right, so now I'm at a good consistency. It's thick, but it's flowing off the stick. And I'm happy with that, okay? So I'm going to mix up the other colors exactly the same way. And then we will give this a try. All right, so I mixed up three colors. Now the last thing I need to do is make my cell activator with Floetrol and white paint. Now, I'm sticking with the Amsterdam Standard Series Titanium White Paint because that works for me so much that I don't want to change that part, plus I have it, okay? But feel free if this does work, which I'm a little skeptical, but if it does work, um, feel free to try different white paints. Now I have probably, well, I'm looking at them about 40 different white paints that I went through for this technique that didn't work. So, well, it didn't work with the paint bases that I was using. So, um, who knows, it may work with this, but
for this demonstration, we're going to use the Amsterdam. So I have probably a teaspoon and a half of Floetrol in there to, let's start with a teaspoon of the white paint. And I'm going to show you what the consistency is that I use for this, for the cell activator. I like it nice and fluffy. As if you're making whipped cream and it's just starting to thicken. Very loose yogurt, maybe. So you can see the consistency of that. It'll leave a trace on the surface so you can literally trace a design on the surface with it and then it sinks back down and disappears. So that's how I like it. Okay. Now we're good to go. So now I'm going to say 10 Hail Marys really quick because if this works, could you imagine how much, how many products you can cut out and I think a lot more people will try it. So here's our white paint that was right out of the bottle and we're going to need more. There was no water or anything added to this, just right out of the bottle. Again, that was Art Mines Semi Gloss Exterior True White. I don't know what this is on this canvas, but it's permanent, whatever it is. So you can see the thickness of that. It's pretty thick. Your end goal is to kind of have all of your paints, even this one, about the same consistency as the other ones. So that when you go to tilt, they all glide together. Okay, so I'm going to just use my fingers to kind of pull this out to the edge. And then I'm going to add a little bit more right in the center for some cushion. So you not only have this paint down here to support the colors gliding, but you have the extra little mound in the center too. Okay, so right there. So the first one I'm going to put down is yellow. Then we have Prussian blue. Maybe a little bit more of that. And then the red violet deep. Which is purple. <laughs> I love these some of these names. All right, so here's my cell activator. Plop right in the center. You don't need a lot. And I'm just going to lift this up and blow it. <sighs> Holy crap, guys. Look at this. Can you believe that? Wow, we, huh? That is selling like crazy. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> Here, let's do a couple more. Oh. 
Oh, somebody asked me the other day, I went to do another bloom down here and I didn't add more white paint. And he said, why didn't you do that? Well, the reason was A, I forgot to, and B, um, it was so close to the edge that I knew it was going to flow off and I didn't need that extra support of a pillow there. So I can't get over this. I cannot get over this. Two ingredient blooms. Floetrol and polycrylic. Wow. Well, now you know. Oh, and the white paint. We're going to try it too with regular um, artist loft paint in a second. I'm not going to leave you hanging in case you can't find that. Semi-gloss white. We're going to try it with a regular craft store white paint. That is amazing. Look at that. Would you look at that? I can't get over this. I really can't get over this right now. I really can't get over this. All I'm thinking about is all that money I spent on products. That is insane. All right, we'll do one more. Right in the corner here. So that... We have enough to stretch around and make sure that we end up with some cells. Now, my white... And the center looks a little milky, not like that bright, bright white. So I may have to add a little more white paint to the mix. That one I totally missed. Okay. I'm going to pause you and let that develop. Okay, so I'm going to tilt that around and see what happens. The, uh, had a lot of color stuck under there. This is interesting for sure. I'll tell you that. This is really interesting. Come on. Very interesting. And you know what? I bet if you sat and worked on this a little bit, you see my finger going up through the center of this cheap canvas. 
if you sat and worked on this a little bit, maybe added a little glue or something to the mix. Who knows? But we're going to set this uh, right down here for now because I want to do this other one quick. This is just a do-over. All right, so here is some Flow Acrylic by Artist Loft from Michaels. I'm not gonna do anything except dump it out of the bottle. Oh, that's too thick. <laughs> that's too thick. <laughs> oh boy, I said it felt a lot thinner in the bottle. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so we're going to Put this white paint down. I just watered it down a bit. Here's the consistency. It's pretty. Oh, there's something clunky in there. You know, my art bottle of Artist Loft is very old. So it's pretty. Uh, there it is. See it? It's there. I see it. I see it. To get it out of there. It's like dried up at the bottom of the bottle. So let's just try this out. I'm sure there's more treasures hidden in that paint. <laughs> but it will work for our purpose, which is to see if those paints, look at all those air bubbles, if those paints will activate on top of this artist's loft. That is not a gloss paint. I'm not necessarily worried about all that junk in there. But there are a lot of air bubbles. I was really whipping it. Okay. Okay. So let's do the same thing again. Oh, we need a little pillow in the middle. Nice lumpy pillow. <laughs> it's all in the name of science. She blinded me with silence. I don't know why I just sang that. That had nothing to do with science. Silence. Sure, you guys are screaming, silence you. <laughs> okay, same colors, same cell activator. Although I did want to add a little bit more in there which I'm going to do really quick. Just a little more white paint. That's it. Take me two seconds to whip this in there. All right, good enough. Good enough. Okay, let's try this one. I blew way too hard, but there are cells coming. Look at that. I blew way too hard. I went all the way down to the bottom. Let's try another one. That uh, Artist Loft paint was really fluffy. So when I blew, it just went flying. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So I am getting a reaction in that too. 
Not the best reaction, but I am getting one. Oh boy. I'm pretty sure with a little tweaking we can do this. You just let it sit for a second. I have a bunch of paint stuck under here. All right, we'll leave it at that for now. Let it develop. Okay, so while I was waiting for this one to come back up to the surface, the paint from me blowing, I did another one on that semi-gloss base. So, you know something? This is definitely something we're going to play around with more because it does make it a lot more achievable for people if you're able to use regular old paints. Now, the outcome may look a little different than with all of the house paints, but it still has a bloom-like effect, and you are getting that pretty lacing in the center where you want it. So... About it, guys. I'm going to shut the camera off now before it turns into a second video. I uh, want to thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And um, I'm coming back maybe tomorrow or the next day with a really fun project. So make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment. Join my Facebook group, United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa. All of the links are below. And um, until next time. Until next time. I just threw paint everywhere. Happy pouring!